Alright, so when it comes to UVB, there's uh, several different things that you need to take into consideration. The first is the strength of the UVB, and then the second is the type of UVB bulb. So I want to start first by discussing UVB strength. There's generally a few different strengths you're going to see on the market. There's what's called a 2.0, um, which is reflected here with the natural light. It's a formally a 2.0 UVB. Then there's a 5.0, which we have here, the 5.0, or in the ZoomEd version, 5.0. Then there's the 10.0, which you can see here is a ZoomEd 10.0, and Exoterra has a nice small print 10.0. And then there's the newer, um, what I call a 15.0, which is just made by Exoterra right here. So what does all that mean, 2, 5, 10, 15.0? What it really means is a UVB penetration depth. So that penetration depth is more important than what it says on the box. Your tropical bulb is a 5.0, whereas your desert bulb is a 10.0. However, that does not necessarily mean that this is only for desert and this is only for tropical. What it means is it's a reflection of the UVB penetration. So backing all of that up, a 2.0 is gonna give you three inches of UVB penetration max, and that's without a screen lid in place. Once you put a screen lid in place, you're gonna cut about half of your UVB penetration. All right, so this is a radiometer. This measures UVB output in microwatts per centimeter squared. Typically, what you want to see for a desert species is a range of 25 to 50 microwatts, and then for a tropical species, we look for 12 to 25 microwatts. So you can see when we get right on the bulb, let you get in there, you can see how high that's reading. This must be a fairly new bulb. And as we get further away from the bulb, notice it comes down a little bit lower. So the further away we get, the lower it gets. And that's why the UVB penetration is so important. Now notice this, we're sitting at about 400 microwatts. I'm gonna put a screen lid in its place now. But I want you to see the big difference. So now right about the same height, it's shaved about 100 microwatts off. So the screen lid does matter. Furthermore, something I want you all to see, we get this a lot from people. A lot of times people will say, well, my tank is in a window, doesn't that count for UV? Glass filters out 100% of UV light. So today we have a very overcast today, very low obvious uh, sunlight coming through, but I want you to see this. If I point this radiometer through the glass, you can see we're getting nothing. Even on an overcast day, now there's UV coming through. Now again, it's minimal, but we're also in January and it's very overcast. But the point I'm making is that glass filters out nearly 100% of UV. So putting your tank in front of a window will not give you the UV output that you need. In fact, you'll be twice as bad because you have the glass from your tank that's filtering the UV and the glass from the window. So this guy right here is virtually useless from a UVB output. It's primarily used for plant growth or as an antimicrobial. In other words, it'll help keep down molds and bacteria in the tank. Your 5.0 bulb is typically gonna give you 12 inches maximum UVB penetration. And again, that's without a screen lid. Your 10.0 is gonna give you 16 to 18 inches max penetration. And then your 15.0 or your UVB 200, this will give you about 20 to 22 inches max penetration. Now the reason all of that is important, let's just say that we have a tropical animal that's 16 inches away from the bulb, you're going to use the 10.0 or the desert UVB. So this is really just kind of a marketing word right here, desert. What we're really looking at is that UVB penetration. On the flip side, let's just say you have a desert animal that's three inches from the surface of the bulb, you may be able to get away with the 5.0 because this gives you 12 inches of UVB penetration. Um, all those synthetic UVB bulbs are not nearly as strong as the sun they too can be too powerful for the animal because the animal is exposed to them all day versus outside in the sun that they're able to um, hide, you know, basically from part of the day. So now that you know that, your difference between your 2.0, 5.0, 10.0, and 15.0, now we can look at a few other variations of the UVB bulb. The next variation is the mercury vapor bulb. We have the solar glow line right here by Exoterra, and then the power sun bulb right next to it by Zoomit. So there's two components to this bulb. First is the UVB penetration. So as I explained on the, um, the 5, 10, and 15.0s, these guys are gonna give you three feet of UVB penetration regardless of the wattage. So notice we have 80 watt, 125 watt, 160 watt in Exoterra. Our zoom eds go 80, 100, and 160. UVB penetration is, is the same on all three of those, three feet. So when we're looking at that now, we have to look at the size of the tank or the height of the tank. So say you have a bearded dragon in a tank that's 24 inches tall. 
you're gonna need one of these mercury vapor molds. These guys just aren't gonna cut it. Typically, like a bearded dragon and a 55, although it's 21 inches tall, we always go with mercury vapor to get the adequate UVB penetration. So the difference in these bulbs is the wattage or the heat output. Mercury vapor bulbs are an all-in-one bulb, as you can see right here. They are a combo between heat and UV. So your difference on the wattage is how hot the bulb is. Uh, typically a 160 watt on a 40 breeder tank will give you a 95 degree hot spot. So that's what we tend to use for bearded dragons. The 125 watt on a 40 gallon tank will give you maybe an 85 degree hot spot on the ground. But in the tree, it might give you a 90 degree hot spot. So that's really good for like uh, water dragons. Your 80 watt bulbs are gonna be if you wanna put a mercury vapor bulb on like a 20 long or something. So we've now covered our compact fluorescents, which are these guys. We've covered our mercury vapors, which are these guys, but there's still a couple other versions on the market. Next, we have the metal halide, which you see right here is the Power Sun HID by Zoomin. Now the metal halide is a very unique bulb in that it will not plug into a standard fixture. It has to have its own separate ballast, which is built into that hood. Those bulbs will give you six feet of UVB penetration. So this would be critical at a very large enclosure, like a full room enclosure for a green iguana, um, which we keep our green iguana in. Um, anything that's gonna be very tall and very large is where that would come into play. From a heat output, it's gonna be very similar to the 160 watt mercury vapor. That's only a 70 watt bulb, but metal halides are very hot. So um, at about 18 inches from the surface of the bulb, you'll get about a 95 degree hot spot. What you get more than anything is that UV penetration. So typically if you're using that bulb, you're still gonna need supplemental heat, but you'll get the UV penetration you need. Next we have our T5 um, linear fluorescence and our T8 linear fluorescence. So over here, uh, T8 is kind of the uh, thicker style bulb. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a T8, if you look at the thickness of the bulb. The old bulbs you used to see overhead were T12s, which are really thick, they're about that big. Your T5 bulbs are significantly thinner. So there's a T5 versus a T8. So what's going on here with the different bulbs is simply energy efficiency. The T5 bulb is gonna run at a much lower wattage than the T8 bulb will, um, and therefore it'll be um, a little more energy efficient. So like this right here is a, fifth, or is a 12 inch bulb at 15 watts. This is an 18 inch bulb at 15 watts. So energy efficiency strictly. Now on the linears, um, the main bulbs that you're gonna see again are 2.0, 5.0, and 10.0. The 2.0 is really starting to go away, and you're primarily seeing 5.0 and 10.0. Your UVB penetrations are the same. Your 5.0s um, are gonna give you that 12 inches of penetration from the surface of the bulb, whereas your 10.0 will be 16 to 18 inches of penetration from the surface of the bulb. All of that being said, the Reptisun line right here, um, or these are all the Reptisun line, but uh, the line that comes with the hood, these have a very high quality reflector in them, and these particular hoods come with a 5.0. Now that 5.0 is technically 12 inches of UV penetration, However, when coupled with this hood, that 5.0 will give you upwards of 20 inches of UVB penetration uh, without a screen lid. So it is possible to use one of these hoods on a 40 gallon tank with a bearded dragon and get the UV that you need because the reflector is so high quality. So now that you understand the difference between all the strengths, the next thing we need to discuss is uh, how long the UVB actually lasts. Uh, since uh, UV is uh, radiation in essence, these bulbs do expire. Once you turn them on, they start to degrade and the UVB wears out over time. So where you might get a certain UVB rating right out of the box, um, in six months, it'll be half that strength. Six months later, it'll be even half that strength. The Zoomed bulbs are really cool in that they give you a spot on the bulb. Actually, I'll write this one right here. They give you a spot on the bulb to write the date of first use. So I wanna show you what this looks like. So first use date, replace yearly. Now here's the thing with that. These don't generally last a year. Uh, we have a radiometer here where we can measure UVB output on the bulbs. And typically what you're gonna find is your compact fluorescence, which can be this style or this style, are only gonna be good for about six to eight months. So write the date on there at six to eight months, bring it to us and let us test it. If you don't live locally, figure within six to eight months, the UVB is gonna be shot and then it's time to replace it. Mercury vapors, they typically will last about 12 to 14 months before the UVB is shot. That metal halide, we ran one for two years and the UVB was still good. So I'll throw that out there. As far as the linears go, I would say these guys are pretty close to a year. Zoomed is a real high quality bulb, but typically you'll get about a year out of it. So just because your UVB bulb turns on and appears to be working, doesn't mean that it's actually outputting the UVB penetration or the UVB output that's necessary.